unlike uh, the first uh, showcase I did present yesterday, uh, where we have already done most of the work concerning the medical sector, this is kind of work in progress still. Um, so we, we have two showcases more, and we, we're kind of jumping in now. Um, you know quite well both cases. Uh, this is Volkswagen. Um, so as you know, <laughs> we, are, we are funded by the Volkswagen Foundation, to, <laughs> to mention that again, which is an independent foundation from the company, but somehow it attracted our attention uh, <laughs> to work also uh, on the cheating uh, of the Volkswagen company. And uh, yeah, this is kind of the Petrobras case and, um, and a lot of um, construction entrepreneurs. Uh, the Odebrecht uh, uh, family, um, German descendants. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we, will, we will talk about that a little bit more. Um, you know, our general question already, so uh, um, I don't have to mention it again. Also, uh, that we are dealing with uh, how far we get with a rational choice explanation and uh, how strong we can emphasize uh, um, this kind of uh, deviant rules corruption where organizational benefits uh, are more important than personal gains and, um, and the costs are not so important. Uh, and we have this unwritten rules and social cocooning and uh, high-ranked insiders who are playing uh, the deviant game. Um, okay, I will, I will just show something about the institutional environment, uh, how it changed, especially in Brazil, concentrating more uh, on Brazil. And then I will go into the Volkswagen plot. <coughs> And, um, of course, the Operation Car Wash, kind of trying to compare, also it's very difficult to compare, it, but on this more general level, and kind of to illustrate uh, kind of a general message uh, that money is only half of the story. I think uh, this is uh, um, one of the main messages uh, uh, we try to show. So this is the EPA, Environment Protection uh, Agency. Um, uh, this is just about kind of a, a law enforcement. Uh, and you can see uh, they have a slightly shrinking number of cases. But, um, and, um, but uh, the years of incarceration did rise recently. And the fines as well, um, fines and restitutions, this one uh, goes up to 1.5 billion uh, US dollars and this Deepwater Horizon. And this is a Deepwater Horizon case. Uh, and if we add the Volkswagen case, so <laughs> I will show in a minute. Uh, um, okay, we kind of spoil the whole, the whole chart. Um, I would say in Brazil we have a new era of uh, law enforcement uh, and this is kind of a remarkable, remarkable change. Um, they have now this International Anti-Corruption Act uh, concerning the companies. They have a, a spread of compliance departments. They uh, did entry into the National Corruption Register and heading towards a corporate criminal law. Um, and uh, talking about Sergio Moro, uh, you have this more specialized uh, prosecution uh, offices and judges. Uh, and this is just uh, the formal side. And uh, so if you look what happened, um, then we see this is uh, kind of the economic side of the Petrobras case, uh, which is kind of remarkable. So they have like um, alleged improper payments mm, of 1.8 billion uh, US dollars, uh, which is quite a lot. They have uh, 133 arrested individuals. 
including CEOs, board members, um, and other people from the C-suite. Um, they did recover an amount of um, 825 million US dollar, and the average sentence, uh, um, 15 CEOs have been sentenced already, uh, the average number of years uh, they sent to jail is roughly 15 years. So this is kind of a remarkable change concerning law enforcement. Uh, in former times in Brazil we had rather rare cases uh, that went to trial and uh, even more rare cases where the people went to jail. Um, okay, we see some of the changes concerning the institutional side and the institutional arrangements and kind of new legislation, new era of law enforcement. Um, so let's talk about Martin Winterkorn <laughs> and uh, the clean diesel um, campaign. Jonathan, you, you just kind of <laughs> did prepare what I'm telling now. Um, so this was kind of a use of a software to activate the emission control only on the testing block. So this is a special kind of software that was used and in reality the cars did emit up to 40 times more NOx in the real world driving. This software was deployed in 11 million cars worldwide. So, just taking this scandal, um, they started uh, with Audi uh, in 2004, uh, where they kind of, I would not say invented, but implemented uh, this kind uh, of software. Uh, 2007, Volkswagen started to use it. And uh, 2014, which is quite interesting, um, already in uh, March 2014, uh, we had this ICCT study uh, where they found out uh, how the software is working and um, uh, the multiple NOx emissions. And Volkswagen got a notice from the EPA very early. So it took them almost one and a half year to react. Yeah, So September, they had the confession, September 2015, of the CEO and the demission uh, of um, Martin Winterkorn. In 2015, the board of directors of Volkswagen had bonus payments that add to 70 million euros. So you can see there was also kind of a calculating part um, because we've checked on the um, defendant's answering brief of the lawyers of Volkswagen and it was written, they kind of calculated uh, 100 million euro of fines and restitution and that's was kind of okay. <laughs> so Volkswagen could get along with that. So I don't know. This is a long time um, before the things really got hot for Volkswagen. And um, there is a long history of cheating that started with Volkswagen itself. So in 1974, uh, it was done in 1973, they had kind of this sensor systems uh, for temperature, which had the same function almost, uh, uh, concerning the emission uh, control on a testing block. And you see the fine was kind of, okay, <laughs> uh, 120,000 uh, US dollars. And then there's a, I mean, this is a deviant environment. You can see it once. There's a, a whole history. So uh, um, who is who uh, in the car making industry? Chrysler, Ford, GM, uh, Toyota, 
in 1995, Ford in 1998, Honda in 1998. Then they have this uh, truck uh, uh, producing uh, companies in 1998. BMW motorbikes, so they get along, uh, no fines. Uh, um, and 2004, then again, uh, Audi and Volkswagen, uh, who started. So I think now we know um, the first round of uh, restitutions and fines um, adds up to 15 billion uh, US dollars. Uh, New York uh, will be probably um, 1 uh, billion US dollars as well, and it's just one state of uh, 51 states. So experts uh, are estimating uh, that it will add up probably, but we don't know yet, uh, to um, 60 billion US dollar for Volkswagen. So um, if it's more than 70 billion, Volkswagen is dead. So I think that's quite something, uh, and it's quite interesting what's behind. Um, Jonathan already told you, I mean, clean diesel still in, in the United States was kind of a hard business. So uh, the Americans don't like it. <laughs> diesel cars, so they had a really small market share. But the market share was dominated by uh, Volkswagen. So they had uh, an, a rising sales and they had more than 90% uh, of diesel cars. So there was a kind of a organizational uh, benefit. They had legal incentives, uh, like bonus systems, the reputation. Um, I think it was very important that they did belong to the inner circle of the company, uh, if you look at the people who were involved. And of course they had their career advantages. For us it was quite interesting that no illegal personal gains are mentioned. So uh, these software engineers uh, who did um, cheat or took over the Bosch uh, software, uh, there are no kind of illegal um, money that flow uh, into their purses uh, mentioned so far. I think still we have a subculture. If you look of, uh, at the complaint of Eric Schneiderman, uh, uh, who is running to become governor of New York uh, as well, so he's kind of <laughs> active uh, in showing what he's capable to do. But uh, he, he was listing 42 engineers and managers in his complaint. So we don't know what works out and what will be justified, but that's quite something. And it's, again, again, uh, it's a subculture. Um, not just one uh, guy or two guys, not just individual deviants. Uh, this is pointing to, towards organizational deviants. And we've, we've checked, of course, not all um, of these 42 engineers and managers we, we could check on the CVs, uh, but uh, we could do it for the most important uh, people. And uh, they have a kind of a job tenure or company tenure up to uh, 30 years uh, at VW. So <laughs> Volkswagen or the Volkswagen Group, uh, they serve. So the, this has been insiders with long job tenure and, uh, of course, high-ranked insiders. Um, we don't know how high. <laughs> But uh, we know the second level uh, uh, underneath the C-suite uh, was involved. Okay, so you can see this is a part of the story um, which we could explain with organizational deviance. We have this um, interesting role of socialization inside people. <laughs> high-ranked uh, uh, people, so hierarchy is playing a role. We have a strong competition, and we have kind of a normalization uh, of this kind of deviance in a deviant environment. So it's not just 
Volkswagen that did it. So now things becoming probably more difficult, but <laughs> uh, we try our best. Um, of course, we, we've checked on the Petrobras case as well. And, um, you know, uh, this is not a unique case concerning the construction company. Uh, so trust building uh, in Germany uh, is also quite common and uh, um, price fixing. And so they had this kind of trust building of uh, altogether 23 construction companies. Um, and intermediaries uh, to, to do the money laundering. Uh, so this has been the Doleros. I hope, hope I pronounce it in the right way. <laughs> the Doleros and consulting firms. And they had kind of shell uh, firms um, uh, for money laundering. And uh, it went to uh, Petrobras. Uh, so the whole thing uh, was about contracts and uh, the construction firms who could get the contracts um, and they were paying bribes uh, to the Petrobras uh, C-suite um, and they, they've been using fake contracts um, as well and uh, from there uh, we won't talk about it too much Today it went to the political parties. Um, okay, you, we can see also it's a deviant environment. So it started very early, with kind of the formation uh, of the trust in already in 1997, and then we have this trust building in 1999. So uh, we have this club of nine construction companies and a club of. Mm, 16 construction companies uh, so they did it they did it for a long period of time and this was part of the plot mm, that they have a cartel uh, that is working quite nicely because it brought a lot of benefits uh, to the construction companies uh, this is uh, the Petrobras share uh, on all sales so you see there are a lot of organizational uh, benefits involved. You see Odebrecht, 40%. Guterres, I don't know if I pronounce it right, 61%. Um, and so on, <laughs> uh, 69%. So, so quite a big share of total sales of construction companies. Uh, they did uh, via a bribe paying system. Um, uh, related uh, to Petrobras and the revenue uh, was rising uh, between 2004 and 2013 three times. So you can see also we have this kind of organizational benefits that is uh, that are important, constantly rising sales. We don't know yet uh, <coughs> about the kickbacks for bribe payers. We only know, and Sergio Moro is not here right now, <laughs> we could ask him, we only know that in the sentences uh, no illegal personal gains uh, are mentioned, uh, but we are not quite sure um, if there haven't been any kickbacks um, for the bribe payers. But again, it's quite a group, 47 CEOs, entrepreneurs and middle managers uh, and the average um, years of company tenure is high again. So uh, 28 years uh, of company tenure. So we have kind of the same uh, um, configuration um, like in the Volkswagen case. Uh, I think What's kind of different uh, concerning this kind of plot, uh, and I don't know if we have in Germany any of these plots, uh, is the political side. It's not the uh, building of trust. Uh, it's the political side. So uh, that a lot of this money um, went 
uh, to politicians, former politicians and political actors. Uh, so the list of uh, Jano, they had uh, uh, 53 uh, search warrants and arrests uh, of politicians and uh, 298 new names at the list of Odebrecht. So we don't know yet uh, what is going on concerning the legal evaluation of the list of Odebrecht. Uh, some of them could be legal party financing, some of it was, be, was probably illegal party financing. Um, but the bribes paid were quite high. So sometimes up to uh, 15 million uh, uh, US dollars. So not just you know uh, a few thousands of US dollars. And um, these are the parties. I think that's important. The parties uh, that are mentioned um, concerning. You see the Workers Party with 27 percent and the Progressive Party with 8 percent. Then you have this uh, Democratic Movement Party, 15%, and the Social Democratic Party uh, with 17%. So you, you could see it's kind of spreading uh, uh, around, I would say, the, the biggest parties, you may correct me, uh, of the political system uh, in Brazil. So. We do have a problem concerning the access to the files. You see the corruption case uh, at Curitiba, we had very easily access because they changed the policy. So the files have been available immediately after the hearings, immediately after the trial. You could check on, on everything, even you could go to YouTube and uh, watch, watch uh, the videos. So it was very transparent, uh, but not the political side, because uh, 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 they kind of sometimes have a privileged status, so, and uh, now it's uh, um, moved up to the Supreme Court, uh, who is uh, taking care of a lot of uh, these trials, um, investigations so far, and um, so this have been the search warrants and arrests we could check on, and you see uh, this uh, uh, is the absolute number of the Progressive Party, uh, the Democratic Movement Party, the Workers Party, and the Social Democratic Party so far. So it's not just the PT, uh, but we have a kind of a, a, a strong. Um, domination right now of the um, progressive party um, but it depends if you're tracking the money and you, you uh, see where it uh, gets so uh, we don't know how, how to evaluate this uh, and we still need time to find out and we'll have a research project uh, on uh, economic corruption and political corruption as well. So they had 11 sentences uh, right now, um, uh, average number of years of incarceration is again 15 years. So under what conditions are organizations using illegal means? Uh, again, uh, for us it's important if the institutional environment is open to deviance, so a lack of control and many violations. If it's legitimate for the inner circle and expected from the top, and if the inner circle is dominated by, we did call it committed company men, but if that's kind of uh, too positively <laughs> associated, <laughs> you could call it old boys networks as well, uh, uh, who are uh, very important um, concerning this kind of um, organizational deviance. So money is only half the story. We think rational choice theory is quite capable to explain passive corruption, this is bribe taking, and the calculation of fines, but we think the institutional approach 
is more qualified to explain this kind of active corruption, bribe paying and uh, organization uh, uh, cheating. So, now you can jump in, <laughs> move in for the kill. I'm done, many thanks.